G'day folks, Les from Calandra Marine. We don't normally see a G2 in this situation where we've been able to strip off all the cows to come in for a service and give you the opportunity to have a look at what makes these motors so unique. So the big key features of this motor is how can we fit such a big powerful motor into that nice streamlined frame as we all see it with its nice glossy cables or covers and cables all over it. Well, the concealed oil tank, neatly fitted down here, but refueled by simply just removing one panel on top, re-oiled down here. So let's just have a bit of a gander at this motor and pick up some of the, well, innovative, um, unique things in this engine. So number one, we have an oil reservoir here. Okay, every motor might have an oil reservoir, but do they have one for a gearbox? This here, and that, basically what this does is to stop when the oil builds up pressure, blowing the prop seal when it gets too hot. Oil builds up, comes back into the reservoir, reservoir stores it, oil temperature cools down again, reservoir feeds it back into the gearbox. That's, you know, that's what makes, little things like this is making this motor special. Probably something um, I'd like to talk about which makes these totally unique is how the gearbox works. So it's an electronic gearbox and it's controlled by an actuator which is down here. But hang on, let me, I've got one over here, Billy. This is the actuator. So this changes the gears in the motor. This puts it into neutral, puts it into forward, puts it into reverse. Old school outboards have a shift shaft which runs down the back of the leg here, which requires adjustment, requires ongoing maintenance. This here simply says from the control box, which is all electronic in one of these, I want to go into neutral. So the survey motor here goes boom, I want to go into reverse, boom, I want to go into forward, boom. So this is concealed in the top part of the gearbox here and the wire goes up into the engine management system. Here's the actual wire on the actuator on this gearbox here. And that oil reservoir we we're talking about earlier, that's its tube here. Neatly, two nice little tubes there. No ugly big shift shaft. So one of the notable features of these motors that people say when they're looking at them with all their cows on, they have this big bump in one side. So if you're looking through the middle of that motor, you can see that it sits a little bit more to this side. So why? Because this motor has what's called starboard starboard exhaust, which means that the exhaust runs from here to the starboard side, from this bank of three, and also from this bank of three, giving them common length and producing optimum power going into one big monstrous exhaust tube here and expelled all the way through, downwards, and out through the prop. So I'll quote Harley Davidson here. Um, the most, well, the best gain in any performance is to have two equal exhaust banks. So, we talk a motorbike, we talk a Harley Davidson, you won't see two pipes just coming out and going like this. They're meticulous in making sure that the length of the, the rear pipe is the length of the front header too. It sort of comes out, we pick up the constant length and then produce it through one exhaust outlet. Now. Contrary to what a lot of people want to believe, expelling exhaust through two uneven pipes is not as a performance uh, gaining as propelling it through one. So, Evan Rood have done that with what's called starboard starboard exhaust port. So this was previously race bred technology, but this is standard technology in a, an Evan Rood G2. So you can see, you know, there's no one going to surpass them in performance. So the brains of the whole outfit, we've got an EMM, a computer that sits up top here. It has a series of modules talking to it. The control box, two wires come back. They're talking to this little module here, which is the DPS module, dynamic power steering. This little box here controls power steering throughout the motor and what we call eye trim, which is your automatic trim, which another genius breakthrough that 
you hop behind one of these as you've seen and you just push the throttle down and hang on to the steering wheel. So what this achieves and what it relates to, to the end user is automatic. It's like cruise control in an outboard. We're simply applying the revs and hanging onto the steering. Now, we can change the steering setting if you want it lighter, you want it firmer, at the touch of a dial. And this is all achieved through these couple of cables here. I don't know if you can see them, Billy, but I can put my fingers around them. That is the whole rigging for this motor. It fits neatly in this tube and continues up to the forward of the boat. And this unit here, this is your DPS unit. So this is your power steering, your trim, everything, all in this one stem. All right, so, oh, here's me mechanic, Yara, over here, come here. Yes, Liz. Why don't we talk about, I'll leave this to you because this is more your field than my field. Can you explain why the air box is here and how the air and fuel gets mixed? Unlike a, a force rack which runs the beam induction rams that run over here. Well, what we got is uh, air intake on the that end is the front of the motor. Air in through the bell mouth on top of the motor there into like a plenum chamber where it's variably mixed into the reed valves, then in through the crankshaft, yep. which is you got reed valves close to the. Uh, crankshaft, you got more power, you got more torque. And unlike traditional engines being direct injection, we're putting fuel straight from a fuel pump into each individual cylinder. Yep. Unlike common rail and a different common setup, rail setup. Yeah, yep. where it's mixing it all and hoping yep. it all gets in at the same time. So the injection system in these is into the each cylinder, the top of the cylinder, into the cylinder head, where a normal fuel injected motor, say a four stroke, they've got the fuel injectors in an inlet manifold, which has then got to go through valves, you know, it travels the distance before it's mixed and then charged into each cylinder. So it loses a lot of pressure where these loses, are extremely high pressure. Yeah, and these are more efficient design and you can't get any closer to the piston than what they are there. And that's why these things just have incredible fuel economy. Good fuel economy and that instant power. And obviously having that bell mouth at the front here, that's eliminating sucking in a lot of salt air. Salt air and it's getting cool air up there as well. Okay. The cowl design is not just space age because it looks good, it's there for a purpose. So. Yep. so in closing, the thing we love about these the most is one plug, one computer, the full diagnostics of the motor, whether you're the person that bought it from day one or you're the fifth owner of this motor, all the diagnostics, all the history of this motor is stored in here and downloaded into our eTech portfolio. So, peace of mind. So what is this peace of mind going to do for you? It's going to, not only for you, the owner, at the time, but for you to be able to forward this motor on, trade it in, sell it, move on to your next new e-tech. It's enabling someone to get the full picture of this motor. Every little thing that's happened to it, every little thing that, um, from a service point. It's, it's a relaxing feeling to have a computerized com engine that basically there's no bull. No one can pull the wool over your eyes with one of these. I think that's, that's the way of the future. G'day, Les here, just finishing off another deal. Do you like our YouTube videos? Well, hit the subscribe button. You know that subscribe button there? You'll become part of the family of Calandra Marine and get given the latest opportunity to watch our YouTube videos as they become available. So get behind us, we get behind you. Hit subscribe.